The Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BSF Canada and Invigor Hybrid Canola. Agriculture.com. We're back here today with another Canola School episode, and I have here with me Russell Tristchuk, who is the Technical Service Manager with BASF. How is it going on your end today? Uh, things are going good. How about yourself? They're going great. Um, are farmers starting to get in the field there yet? Uh, yeah, I was actually uh, just on the field today. I actually got back uh, in time here to do this interview, and yeah, everywhere, everywhere I was, I was going to the Northeast, uh, some sort of activity. Uh, sadly, some combines still going, but uh, but that's good news that they're going. But yeah, lots of cedars, lots of lots of that stuff starting to roll. So good news out there for sure. So the reason we're talking today is to talk about both biotic and abiotic stresses on your canola seedlings with both emergence and survival. So what are some of the things you are telling producers right now? Um, yeah, no, that's a very hot topic this time of year. Obviously, with uh, seed going into the ground. So I think uh, as we go into the season and we start to talk to our, our grower customers about the different stresses, I mean, I try to break it down into the two different buckets, kind of kind of like you did. So the abiotic stress, um, you know, really think of that as environment. Um, in the, this time of year, you're going to obviously run into some colder temperatures, um, frosts, which I, I think are still popping up, unfortunately, here well into May. Um, and then, uh, you know, depending on which part of the world, could be dealing with with drought stress uh, or or on the other end of the spectrum with, with moisture stress. So there's kind of those stresses that you need to take into consideration. Um, and with those stresses, because they kind of look the same, really what we what we tell people to go is, is just go take a look at your crop if you see that your seedlings are coming up and and uh, you know they're purpling or, or or showing some of those different signs of of uh, abiotic stress. I mean, there's not a lot you can do. Uh, but I mean, that's kind of the stuff we we have people watch out for. And then I think maybe even a hotter topic than than stress uh, caused by frost or cold is is really kind of the biotic stresses. With canola in particular, everybody thinks of our our uh, six legged friends, the the flea beetle or the cutworm. Uh, I think cutworms got more legs than six, but um, also um, you know diseases at this time of year are something that you have to kind of watch out for. So with canola in particular, we try to remind people. Uh, not to forget uh, about the diseases because um, you know everybody's kind of focused on the on the insects uh, as they start to come up. But I think all of those things in combination, um, I mean, they're they're really what we're we're getting questions about and and what we're starting to provide some feedback on for for our customers. So, what are some of the tips you give to producers when they're trying to identify these stresses? And yeah, as you said, they all look alike. So, what are some of the things we can do to kind of pick them apart? Um, you know, I think, you know, and this applies to so many different things, keeping an eye on your crop, um, you know, plants, fortunately, you know, they tend to move slow relative to, to maybe animals with displaying, uh, stress responses. So, I mean, get in the habit of, of driving, uh, you know, not just by your field every day, but, you know, you might want to stop and get out and, and, and walk in and, and just take a look. I mean, fortunately, most uh, most growers, you know, have been growing uh, different crops for long enough. They have a pretty good idea what right or, or what healthy looks like. And often, you know, they don't necessarily diagnose specifically something. They just know something is wrong. So, I mean, just going out there and keeping an eye on your crop, first and foremost, is, um, you know, kind of probably the most important thing. With most of the stresses, unfortunately, once the seed is in the ground, uh, you don't have a lot of options to, to fix it, with the exception of maybe a, a quick spray for insecticides. So, I mean, at this time of year, with seeding operations going, you know, a lot of the conversations we have and a lot of the information we have is, is you know, geared towards maybe preparing for, for the stress. Uh, so, you know, instead of telling a grower, you know what, you're going to see a purpling plant, it might turn blue, uh, leaves might cup. Because that really doesn't help them, uh, you know, because it's kind of after the fact, um, you know, trying to have, you know, smart, intelligent conversations with them about what they can do to really mitigate the response to the stress because of how unpredictable they are is, is uh, you know, a lot of the stuff that uh, I've been focusing on. So. so what are some of these mitigative techniques they can uh, tackle? Yeah, well, I mean, that's that's the million dollar question, right? So to me, 
Um, with canola in particular, spending a lot of time thinking about when you're going to seed and making sure that you seed um, at the right time. I know it's a crazy time of year. I know that you know that crop insurance deadline. Every every time the sun goes up and goes down, it's a day closer, and there's a lot of you know kind of anxiousness to get things going. Um, in canola, in particular, because it's a small seeded crop, you know, just take the extra time to make sure that you know is really today the right day that you should be putting it into the ground. Um, you know, what's the weather forecast look like? What's your moisture situation? Obviously, you know, you're you're obviously uh, gambling a little bit or, or or hedging your bets a little bit when you choose to put it in. But, um, you know, it's it's still just May. Um, you know, put it in when you have the adequate moisture, uh, put it to the adequate moisture level. Uh, those types of things are, are really one of the big tips. Um, you know, and that, again, is is some people are, are a little bit more risk averse, little, you know, so sometimes they're they're willing to push it a little bit. But 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 think about, you know, what you're doing and, and when you're doing it and just make sure it's the right time for your comfort level. I've never, you know, after, you know, all the years I've been in the industry right now, when you have issues pop up because of seeding, they're there all year long. Um, you know, and I know it's a tough, tough time. You want to get things done, but really taking, you know, it's a cliche a bit to slow down a bit. But uh, to me, that's that's kind of the number one thing. And then, you know, do everything you can uh, outside of what you can control to the best of your ability. So, again, seeding depth. Right. Making sure that you're at that right seeding depth, making sure that you're seeding evenly. Make sure your seeder is set set evenly. Uh, simple things like getting out to make sure that you're 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 actually seeding at the right rate right you know where the recommendation is to to target a plant population between five and seven plants so you know are you seeding uh, if you know you have high mortality are you seeding at a higher rate to make sure that you target those plants uh, those types of things um, fertilizer placement just all those things that you know have to go on there's a lot of moving parts just make sure that you uh, are taking all those things really to the the highest uh, degree of, of accuracy of, of as good as you can do them because if you take care of all those things um, the stresses that happen which you can't really take care of you know the plants will be able to grow through it right as as you start to have mistakes compound on one another that's when we started to get a situations where you you tend to have train wrecks right uh, so so that's my advice especially with canola is to make sure you you just take the time to do everything to to set that crop up with as much success as you can control and and it should take care of itself it is i remember it is a weed uh, it came from a weed so it's pretty good at bouncing back as everybody knows uh, but we don't want to have situations where we have Two or three plants per square foot and that that crop is struggling to produce let's make sure we we kind of set it up as good as we can and 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 then um you know from there uh you know you kind of cross your fingers and hope the weather is good uh, but you know in the instances if it is bad or you run into pest problems when you've set the crop up well it's it's really kind of in a, in a good situation to, to to grow through it absolutely and like you said it seems like when there's that one field that's not good you shake your head at it all year. You, you drive yeah. past it and it, it yeah. always seems to happen, but if we can avoid it for sure. Yeah. I... So when it comes to some of these stresses that you've mentioned, what sort of numbers do you have as far as impacts towards emergence? Um, well, it's a, it's kind of good that you, you ask that question and use the word emergence because I think, it, you know, when it comes to canola, canola, you know, there's, there's three kind of stages, right? You have germination, and that's the ability of that seed to just kind of break out of its out of its quiescent state and, and form a plant. You then uh, not all seeds that germinate emerge, right? So then you have a, a bit of an attrition there. And, and usually, what what that is caused by that is that there's a certain population of the seed, the gen, the, the whole population of seed just isn't strong enough. But but uh, so you know you, you you'll see maybe a five to ten percent drop right there. Uh, just seed that's not going to get out of the ground. So if you're working at 90% of emergence, uh, so, you know, that's a, a pretty good number. And, you know, you'll go out there and, and look at cotyledon or one to two leaf plants, and you'll probably see uh, the the 90% uh, emergence. And then as the season goes long, um, you will see an, a, a continued attrition uh, up to, to 50%, right? We know survivability uh, typically is uh, between, uh, you know, 50 and 70%. I mean, some fields it's better and some fields it's worse. 
Um, and, and then, so you've got the germination, the emergence, and then you ultimately have um, other things like allelopathy and competition and stuff like that that will lead a, a few more plants out. But generally, you know, for every 10 seeds approximately that you're, you're putting into the ground, you're probably getting an average of, of six plants. So it's between, between 50 and, and, and 70% survival. And I know there's been a lot of progress made, I mean, um, with regards to conditioning the seed and doing different things. I know uh, BASF, uh, you know, we make sure that the seed that we send out is of the, the highest quality. And we've tried to, to, to take steps to, to minimize the amount of seed that's, that's lost. And I would guess that that's happening, you know, with other seed companies. But, but ultimately, we still are at a point where, where you lose that kind of number. And um, again, that's the, you know, that's kind of not thinking of, of plants that are being chewed off by flea beetles and, and cutworms. So if you are in fields where you have a higher pest population uh, of the insects in particular, that number can be even more. And, and that's another tip that I give to people, right? If you've got a field that, you know, gets hit with flea beetles pretty hard, it's got trees around it, whatever, maybe you have to go to a higher rate because, you know, that's, you know, sometimes... Um, the average of numbers that we use take only minor considerations of pests. Uh, so, so yeah, no, that's, that's kind of about the number that, uh, that, uh, I think is floating out there. Okay, great. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Um, I think the only other thing, um, on the lines of stress, I mean, when it comes to frost, I, I think one of the big questions we always get is, you know, you've got that, that crop out there, it's come up, um, and it's, uh, it's been hit with a frost and, and a lot of the questions we come uh, to us are, you know, should we be reseeding? And I think um, the knee-jerk reaction, you know, you want a good even crop and you want to make sure it's uh, it's out there. So the knee-jerk reaction for a lot of growers is to to want to go and reseed. And I mean, um, over my years of experience, and, and, and I do have a bit of a background in frost tolerance in canola, um, very rarely, I mean, when you get into the one or two plants per square foot, then it makes sense. But But very rarely do you ever reseed a crop and that crop lives up to the potential of the the previous crop um so i mean when it comes to when it comes to the frost um i would say if you if unfortunately you're in that situation um just to con just encourage you know the growers out there reach out to your 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 basf rep if it's in vigor seed or, or or your other reps if it's other seed and really have a good conversation about that because I, I just I, I feel like that's my my little soapbox speech of the day here is that I think a lot of a lot of people want to go out there and reseed and and oftentimes it really never pays back just because you're destroying the seed bed you never target where the where the nutrition has been put and it often just leads to like we said that mess that you kind of keep driving by every year and shaking your head so so I mean when it comes to the frost just be just because I know there are some in the forecast. I figure that's why I'd throw that out there. So yeah, reach out to your agronomist or your 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 company sales rep or whoever you, you like to talk to and and just maybe have that conversation before you decide to reseed. So other than that, no, I mean, good luck to everybody. Uh, everybody be safe. Uh, the, a general message under normal situ situations and and obviously even heightened now with, uh, with the situation we're in. But uh, yeah, no, that's about it. Absolutely. Thank you very much. You're welcome.